So it was. A little black girl yearns for the blue eyes of a little white girl. And the horror at the heart of her yearning is exceeded only by the evil of fulfillment. We saw her sometimes, Frida and I, after the baby came too soon and died, after the gossip and the slow wagging of heads. She was so sad to see. If you look at all of her novels, that is what you're going to see. She wants the story told from those eyes of that African-American black experience. The bluest eye, she says, is, it's, it's a slice. It's a slice of life. It is not every black girl's experience, yet <laughs> it is. So we've begun. She starts with the primer, right? And she gives us seasons, and before I start with your questions, there's just one thing I want to make sure that we get. She says, there's really nothing more to say about Pecola, right? Being raped by her father and the baby dies. So she puts that right up front and she says there's really nothing more to say except why. But since why is difficult to handle, one must take refuge in how did this happen. Morrison also says that when she writes, it's not necessarily writing about one person. We might think, and the audience might think, that this is a story about Cola, the 11-year-old black girl who's raped by her father. That's the story. But Morrison says, that's not the complete story. And Morrison also says that it is about us. This is a story about us. It's about community. It's about the tribe. And if it is not about us, then there's no story. Grown people looked away. Children, those who were not frightened by her, laughed outright. The damage done was total. She spent her days, her tendrils, sap green days, walking up and down, up and down, her head jerking to the beat of a drummer so distant only she could hear. Elbows bent, hands on shoulders, she flailed her arms like a bird in an eternal, grotesquely futile effort to fly, beating the air, a winged but grounded bird, intent on the blue void it could not reach, could not even see, but which filled the valleys of the mind. We tried to see her without looking at her, and never, never went near. Not because she was absurd or repulsive, or because we were frightened, but because we'd failed her. Black is beautiful. Oh, but this family's ugly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The contradictions that are there. The book was also um, banned in several several places because of you know several reasons uh, dealing with racism right right up front uh, dealing with rape uh, dealing with incest you, you can just imagine all of those kinds of things that would put it on a banned book list and it's still challenged in some states on a challenged book list mm -hmm. really? yes <laughs> even present day right because it's just too it's too ugly if you just sit with 11-year-old girl was raped by her daddy. Nobody wants to talk about that. But we will, because Morrison, that's what she wants us to do. She already took, that's what happened. Now tell me, how did that occur? And that's, to me, the true beauty of the story, a look at self. And 
if it's not about community, as she says, if it's not about us, if it's not about how I'm treating the little black girl, uh, the little white girl, the little brown girl, my neighbor, if it's not about love, it ain't about nothing. Oh, some of us loved her. The Maginot Line and Charlie loved her. I'm sure he did. He, at any rate, was the one who loved her enough to touch her, envelop her, give something of himself to her. But his touch was fatal, and the something he gave her filled the matrix of her agony with death. Love is never any better than a lover. Wicked people love wickedly. Violent people love violently. Weak people love weakly. Stupid people love stupidly. But the love of a free man is never safe. There is no gift for the beloved. The lover alone possesses his gift of love. The loved one is shorn, neutralized, frozen in the glare of the lover's inward eye.